Welcome back. This is the uncomfortable truth on ENCA as we take a close and interrogative look at South Africa's water crisis. Is it a catastrophe? Let's wade straight back into the audience. Sir, welcome to you. Um, who are you and uh, what's your observation? My name is Gary. I'm a semi-retired water engineer. I totally agree. We um, reinventing the wheel again. 1992, we had the Rio summit. Since then, the total, can you say, new paradigm in detail has been worked out. It's clearly not been implemented anywhere. Now tell us what we need to do. I, if I, you were in charge, yes. if they said, come and join the water and sanitation department, you've got a clean slate, what would you do? Well, I was there long ago, so I don't think I'll go back. But in any case... Um... <laughs> and I'm not even going to ask you why you wouldn't go back. That's part of the problem, eh? That's part of the problem. <laughs> Making government in the place where we are at the point where we're not a, an employer of choice anymore by statements like that. He's got a point, though is that it's experts like you, is what you're saying, Mr. Manister, that are sorely needed. I'm not going to ask you why you left. What I am going to ask you, though, is what would you do about it? One of the first things, and it's all detailed nicely, you will have your local little reference group, and they would get into those rivers, and they would start putting, I know there's all sorts of rules and regulations, temporary structures that could improve the quality of the water. Okay. You pump effluent back to the top of the, the catchment and take the focus away from, once again, praying for rain. Um, is that a good idea, and how much is it going to cost? The same thing is to make sure that we address what we call the science policy interface, which means that the science community needs to work together with the policymakers. Gone are the days where we'll just why, keep... why isn't that happening? The problem is that we can't keep on developing new policies, plans, strategies without implementing those. Maybe we just need to take stock and say, for the next three to five years, we are just going to implement... You, I mean, use the plans that you've got, but who makes the first move? Is it the policymakers or is it the scientific Is it the scientific? I mean, the, the, the first step, it starts with us, the, 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 the scientific community. We generate knowledge, we come up with uh, recommendations or outcomes... We link those outcomes based on the availability of I mean, on the available policies, plans, strategies, and so on, and we identify policy gaps, which means that we need to partner with the line department, and it's the responsibility of line department or provinces to start to implement those um, outcomes. Ben Walleroy, would you like to respond to that? It sounds yeah. like an awful lot of alignment being sought, but not actually any work being done. And it hasn't worked, and it's not going to work, and I'll tell you why. Um, from a business perspective, we've got the technology. Yeah. We've got the trillion rand. We've got that money available locally and internationally. We have no good projects. Thirdly, we need policy certainty. And the keys are all held by national government. And it's local government that is failing in polluting our water resources if you look at the sewage plants and the likes. Anthony Turton, what does policy certainty mean in your, in your world? In the early 2000s, so when South Africa was still humming and we were the darling of the world, a large multinational corporation was about to drop a huge amount of capital into South Africa, would have been the largest foreign direct investment into the country. They didn't do it because of water use license uh, uh, constraints. So they said, why should they put this huge amount of money in the country when they can't guarantee that they're going to get water in the future? And even if they get a license after spending huge amounts of money to get the license, there's no guarantee that that license will be renewed five years from now. So that is the, that's the first time that I realized that water is a fundamental constraint to economic development. So this, this translates ultimately to, to uncertainty. Investors don't like uncertainty. But Mr. Manis, isn't this ultimately sitting on your desk? And I'm not saying your individual desk. I'm <laughs> talking about your department's desk. Should you not be the marshal here? I was going to uh, concur with Dr. Turton for the first time in a long time when he made a statement earlier with regards to the economic situation that we're also in. However, he contradicts himself by saying that it would be just in the best interest of, go of government to make decisions to give water, because that's the reason why you have water license, to make a determination whether the water is available in the first place and get the water then in the right areas. Now, if you have a situation where you need to get, I use your words, to get the country drought proof, then what, what should you do? You should actually determine the reserve and actually see, see what type of water volume of water you have available for what the needs are currently and going to project it going to further. So just because it's a trillion rand, yes, we need that economy. But at the end of the day, we also need to look at what we have. And that's a, re yeah. that's a point what we have to yeah. look into. And, the, and, the, and, the, yeah. and, the, and the, the result of the technology that's available, 
we're not working in a paradigm. And I go back to Tur um, Dr. Turton's point earlier in terms of the economic drought as well. We're not working in a paradigm where we have infinite financial resources at this point in time. So we also have to make a decision in terms of the competing priorities that we have in determining what, a, what options we actually give. Uh, and uh, that, Professor to. Turton, oh. is a very fair and logical point, is that whether we like it or not, we do have competing priorities in this country. No, with that, they're not competing. I fully concur with what you said. It, yeah. But now we need to unpack the story a little bit more because at the moment we're working on a supply-constrained economy. We don't have enough water. We've run to the limits. Of course we need licenses. Of course we have to allocate. We've allocated what we have. We don't have any more to allocate. This is the problem. Population's growing. Their demands are growing. So we, we haven't focused on the supply side of the equation. We focused only on the demand side. So we have to start looking at creating new water. Now, now, where are we going to get new water? Pipeline to the Zambezi, 25 years from now, there's not water in the Zambezi. Are we going to desalinate seawater? Well, that's technically possible, can probably do it tomorrow. Are we going to desalinate acid mine drainage? That's a resource, maybe, I don't know. These are options that we need to put out there as an honest public debate, because each has got a downside, each has got an upside. We need an honest, real, proper cost-benefit analysis. Of those three that you've just raised, what is the most viable and the most cost effective. I think the, I think the low hanging fruit is the 854 uh, uh, sewage works that are damaged. Uh, that, that we can probably move in, in the next, in the, within 12 months, you can probably turn that around. Ms. Levlik, I'll get to you in a moment. I, I know you want to respond to that, but sir, if you'll introduce yourself and raise your point. Thank you. My name is uh, Professor Bimon Kata from IIEMSA. We need different views to handle this problem. We won't have one particular, you know, quick fix solution, but we need those divergent views. Can the government, business, and experts come together so that we can have collective action? It all seems to me that you want to be on the same page. Our guest over here is saying that you're not. What's the truth? We do have the public-private growth initiative, the PPGI, and uh, we took it there as business. It wasn't included originally, and it was agreed at the time in the presidency that water is a national priority. So we've said the stuff now. Now we need to do it, and that's what we're busy working on. And quite honestly, why nothing has been done, it's 10 years that we don't have a strategy or National Water Sanitation Master Plan. I'm just hoping that as business, we can in January start moving very quickly through the PPGI process, which is to create an enabling environment to unlock the investments required, not only in water, but without water, the others don't, don't happen, to unlock the low-hanging fruit, so treating sewage, for example, and desalinating on the coast. All of them are affordable and at parity at the moment. All right, um, Professor Turton, very quickly. We own the problem, and we must get away from this dilemma, because at the moment we're in a dilemma. And a classic definition of a dilemma is all alternative solutions are equally unappealing. We must convert the dilemma into a series of problems, because problems by definition are soluble. Very, very quickly. Uh, you wanted to with the respond. acid mine drainage issue, uh, it was stated that by 2014-2015, the desalination of acid mine drainage must be implemented to address the water security. If we got issue. this right, yeah. how big a dent would it make in the problem? 350 million litres per day. At the moment, the water, after short-term treatment, releases high salinity into the Bar River system, which in future will have to be diluted in order to make it fit for use. And pristine water to be used for dilution is not the best solution. To yeah. answer your question, it's roughly just under 10% of what Gauteng uses through rainwater. Uh, the problem is we're contaminating because we're adding dissolved salts to the system by neutralizing the acidity. So what we're doing now is a stopgap. To me, what's very clear is government doesn't have the money to pour down this. But the private sector does. We just need regulatory policy and contracting certainty. Back to the certainty. This is the uncomfortable truth on ENCA. Running dry, we're looking at South Africa's burgeoning water crisis. More in a moment. We've got plumbers, we've got fitters and tenors, people who can take no, care of the government infrastructure. Someone mentioned that there's poor maintenance in the government. We are here. We are if you get a call from government test. right now, will you go and fix leaks? Exactly, I can do that. Do you feel that people are ignoring you? It's a yes or no question. Yes. In, in, in yes, fact, they're ignoring it. They're ignoring it. That's my response. 